darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy out When brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand in shame
hoping may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. My God will never fail. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory.
Well, good morning. What a joy it is to be with you, Apex Church Online. I am believing that God is really going to speak to our hearts. I don't know what sort of week you've had, but I believe that we have the opportunity right now to encounter God, to encounter His presence. Let's pray that this isn't just an another service online where you're kicking back, whether it's the coffee or a Coke in hand, just relaxing, watching a service. Why don't you choose today that you're going to be part of the service? I believe that God has a word for you in season. And I really want to encourage you in these moments that we unite our hearts together. I believe there is something incredible happens when God's people come together in unity of heart, mind, and soul. And let's be praying for this service. You don't know who's perhaps going to click on that has a major need that has been praying this week, God, would you speak to me? Someone perhaps is just stumbling on this and you are going to be amazed because God is speaking directly into your situation. But listen, folks, we need to be praying over these moments that something incredible is going to happen. One of my favorite Psalms is Psalm 150. And reading from the message, that paraphrase, we read these incredible words. Hallelujah. Praise God in his holy house of worship. Praise him under the open skies. Well, that's where you can praise him right now in your living room, in your kitchen, wherever you're watching this, whatever device you're using. Well, how should we praise him? Well, praise him for his acts of power. Well, that's why I should say. Praise him for his magnificent greatness. I tell you, every single one of you, if you're a Christian and you're listening to my voice right now, you have multiple reasons to worship and encounter God, to lift your voice in praise, to be grateful and show gratitude for all that God has done for you. The psalmist said, he has redeemed me. He has called me by my name. I belong to him. Well, how? Well, the psalmist says these words, praise him with a blast on the trumpet. Praise him by strumming soft strings. Praise him with castanets. Oh, I love that. And dance. Praise him with banjo and, banjo and flute. Praise him with cymbals and with a big bass drum. Praise him with fiddles and mandolin. I tell you what, that's really going for it, isn't it? I don't know. I, I don't imagine that you would have any of those instruments in your house right now. But I tell you what, you've got your voice and you can use your voice as an instrument to declare the mighty works of God. Well, who can worship God? Listen to what the psalmist says. Let every living, breathing creature praise God. Hallelujah. Let every living, breathing creature praise God. Well, if you have breath today, <laughs> guess what? The psalmist has said, you're the one that should be praising God. Hey, we would love to hear where you're watching from. Why don't you get it in the chat and interact with the folks? We would love to know where you're watching from, and we would love to engage with you as part of the community. And Apex Church family, come on, say hello to one another. Now let's get ready to sing and declare the mighty works of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, as we join with the worship team. But we push in right now. Let's sing together. Yeah. 
won't be shaking, you're still on the throne. Oh, hey God, you're still on the
That was a powerful time of worship, wasn't it? I don't know about you, but I love when we get to sing together. And I know perhaps in, in your house, you're maybe saying, well, the noise doesn't sound too great. The Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. I tell you, isn't it amazing? However it sounds in our ears, by the time it ascends into heaven, it's a joyful noise. Well, we're going to come into agreement right now in prayer. I believe in the power of praise. I believe in the power of prayer. I still believe that when we come to God and we make our requests known, He hears us when we come in the name of Jesus. And can I encourage you, if you have a prayer request right now, why don't you get it into the chat so that we can come into agreement with you. There's something incredible happens. The Bible says where two or three are in agreement. There's something when we unite our hearts and unite our spirits. And Maybe you're de dealing with a situation of ill health, whether it's a challenge financially, whatever it is you're going through. Come on, let it, know, let it be known in the chat and we will come into agreement with you. And we are asking God our Father. We're not going to a system. We're not going to a process. We're going to our Heavenly Father, and we're going in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ. And I am so aware that prayer changes things. We sometimes think it's got to be a long, drawn-out prayer. We think that it's got to be a prayer that, that is full of, of, of great sentences or, or, or big words or, or verbs. We, we, we think that it's got to be, you know, everything has just got to be, whoa, so wonderful. And I don't know about you, but I've heard some people that actually pray better than some people preach. It's incredible when you listen to them. But I also know that whether it's a shouted voice or a faint cry, my God hears me. So as I pray right now, would you come into agreement with me? But also if you have perhaps an unspoken request, something that's dear to your heart, something that you need, a divine intervention, I know that God can move on your behalf. So Heavenly Father, I come right now in the wonderful name of Jesus. 
I thank you that it's a beautiful name. I thank you that it's a powerful name. I thank you that it's a name that is higher than any other name. And I know that when my Jesus ascended into heaven, he sat at the right hand of you, Father God. The Bible tells us, make an intercession for us, the saints. So I know right now Jesus is making intercession for me. And as I lift my voice right now, God, I pray for those that are sick in our fellowship. I think especially of Alan Ritchie at this time. I think of his dear wife, Anne. I pray that you would just move in their household. I pray for Linda across in Northern Ireland who really needs a miracle. I pray for Mary in Northern Ireland who needs a miracle. I pray for Andrew Buchan who needs a miracle. Father, there are so many people dear to our heart. And we raise our voices right now because you are able. God, I'm also aware of job situations and employment situations and employers who are trying to get business to move forward in the midst of the challenge that this last period has been. Once again, God, I pray that you would give wisdom and direction. I'm praying for creativity in the things of God that would be worked out here on earth. Lord, people that are trying to go, how do we move this forward? Father, right now, by the, in the precious name of Jesus, I am praying for supernatural enlightenment. I am praying for a wisdom beyond. Father, I am praying for a light bulb moment that suddenly everything would begin to make sense. Father, I'm praying right now for unsaved loved ones. Father, there are many of us who are praying for whether it's wayward, wayward children, whether it's a spouse, whether it's a family member, Lord, whether it's a dear friend, people that are close to our heart that right now are not walking with you. Father, we still believe in the scripture which says a lamb for a household. And I am in coming into agreement right now for perhaps those that are, are weary, uh, Lord, who have been crying tears for prodigals that have wandered. Lord, people, children that once served you, but Lord, have turned their back on you. I am praying, Lord, that in this season, that miracles are going to happen. And Father, that there is going to be rejoicing in our homes because loved ones are coming back to you. Father, we dare to believe for a better future. Now, God, whatever the needs are, if there are any needs that have been uh, shared in the chat, Father God, right now, we come into agreement and we are believing for a breakthrough. Lord, let this be a breakthrough season to everyone that listens to my voice. In the wonderful name of Jesus, amen. <laughs> amen. Well, we're going to go to communion right now. I trust that you're ready and prepared for that. 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 26, we read, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Looking back, looking forward, looking up. Like many of you, I have so enjoyed uh, over these last number of months uh, getting out for a bit of exercise and doing quite a bit of walking. Uh, I love here locally by the River Yugi, there's just some beautiful walks there and, and I love to walk along there and just be reminded of the beauty of nature and the creation of God. I used to actually stay very close uh, in Gulf Road is where I stayed very close to the Gulf Course. And, I, I'll be honest with you, we would stay there for 21 years and for many, many years, the River Yugi and that walk was so close, a lovely prompt to walk along, but I never utilized, I never went there. And, and then latterly, just before we moved, I suddenly rediscovered what was right on my doorstep, what was there all the time, but I took for granted. And it was then that once I, I fell in love with, with the River Yugi and the beautiful scenery that is there. And over these last number of months, I've been walking along there, and especially if you catch it on a beautiful day. And I found myself doing this. As, as I'm walking along, I'm sort of looking forward and looking around at the beauty, but I would stop and I would look back at where I had already been. 
I wasn't only looking at where I was going, I was looking at where I'd been, and I was captivated by the beauty. And this is what you discover in this scripture, because Jesus is very clear, Paul's very clear when he's reminding us that the Lord Jesus, he took the bread, he broke it, and he says, take it, this is my body which is broken for you, this is my blood which is shed for you, and do this in remembrance of me. And we look back to the cross, we look back to the sacrifice, and can I encourage you, maybe we are so familiar Maybe we are so used to hearing about the gospel that we've lost the wonder. And can I encourage you in this moment, maybe you just need to stop and just take a look back and be reminded of what God has brought you from and what God has brought you through. But as I'm also on that walk, I am looking forward and my eyesight is literally going, my gaze is all over the place as I'm looking at the beauty at what's ahead of me. And this Bible, this scripture says this, do this until the Lord returns. Jesus is coming back again. Hallelujah. Not only are we looking back at the cross, but we're looking forward to his coming. And every time I'm out a walk, I take a moment just to look up and say thanks to God for his amazing creation. Can I encourage you in this moment, look back to the cross and sacrifice, look forward to Jesus coming again, and look up and give thanks for all he has done for you. So Father, we give thanks for your body, the body of your son that was broken. We give thanks for the ultimate sacrifice that was made so that we could come into relationship with you. Father God, we thank you for Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you came. Thank you for the incredible sacrifice, the gift of God. So right now, we look back to the cross. We look forward to your coming. And we look up in gratitude. Amen. Well, come on, why don't you take your bread, your cracker, and we eat together as we remember the body of Christ that was broken for us. And in like manner, we take the simple juice that signifies blood that was shed that we could come into that relationship. Thank God for Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you came. Thank you for forgiveness of sins. We're preparing our heart right now to go to the Word of God. Pastor Dan is going to come and continue the series Legends and Misfits. Don't know about you, but I get so encouraged as we study men and women from the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament, look, look a little bit at their life, a little bit of what was happening in their world, and we're inspired to go forward in God. Can I encourage you, lean in at home. Why don't you get a notepad, get some paper, get a pen, Take notes because you can look back and you can reflect. I believe that you are going to be encouraged and inspired and be reminded that God, yes, my friend, God can use you. So come on, why don't you welcome Pastor Dan as he comes to share with us today. Well, good morning. It's great to be able to bring God's Word to you today. And it's a joy that I get to continue our series, Legends and Misfits. Well, I hope you've been enjoying the Olympics so far. What I've managed to catch, I've found really enjoyable. And once again, I've been inspired by the efforts of these elite athletes. Every four years, they're anticipating the next Olympic Games. But this Olympic Games has been a little bit different. It's been caught up in the COVID situation. It's been delayed for one year and... Even before the game started in Tokyo, there was so much questions and confusion of, would it even go ahead? This past year, uh, the athletes have had to adjust and pivot to what situation was unfolding before them. Think about it. Right at the start of lockdown, all the gyms, all the swimming pools, all the running tracks, they were all closed. You couldn't leave your home. And these athletes had to adjust to these circumstances. I heard Adam Peaty, the one who won the 
200 meters breaststroke. Once again, he won the gold medal. And he talked about how at the start of lockdown, he, he couldn't really train. And he had to improvise. Eventually, they built a pool in his back garden. Cyclists couldn't get out on their bikes, so they had to get exercise bikes. And there was this one guy who lived in a flat, was in lockdown in his flat, and his exercise bike was in his kitchen. Then I heard about Jo. She's a kayaker from Australia. And she's quite an impressive athlete because her full-time job is a paramedic. In her spare time, she competes in kayaking. And you can imagine it's a little bit difficult to train for the kayak race in your home. But when things opened up, she went to an isolation camp where she was training by herself. And in the water where she was training, she talked about how she had to overcome crocodiles and sharks that were coming against her kayak. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that's a tough training session. I'm sure there were moments over this past year with the delays and the uncertainty that some of these athletes must have questioned, was it really worth all this extra effort? For that brief moment of few minutes, sometimes only a few seconds, was it worth all that hard work and all those training sessions, even when they were training by themselves, was it worth it? And I'm sure when they stood on that podium and the medal around their neck, I'm sure in their hearts they knew it was worth it. This past year has been difficult, not just for elite athletes, it's been challenging for everyone. And would you be honest to say there's maybe been moments that you've reflected and went, man, this is tough. How am I going to keep on going? Ha has there been moments over this, maybe even past few weeks, where you've got to that place where you've been so discouraged that all you seem to be reaping right now is disappointment, that you've got that place, how will I manage to keep on going? Well, I really believe that this whole season that we've been going through has not been a wasted season. I believe that God has been working in our lives to prepare us for our next season. That there is something ahead for each and every one of us. But are we ready to move into that? See, today I want to talk to you about a legend in the Bible. He's one of the hidden legends. We don't know too much about him. And he's caught up in that group of disciples. He's one of the inner three. But the, some of these disciples, they, before they followed Jesus, they were following someone else by the name of John the Baptist. John the Baptist was a cousin of Jesus, and he was a radical preacher. He was calling out the hypocrisy of the religious leaders at the time. He was calling people to a baptism of repentance. And one of his key points to his ministry was to prepare the way for Jesus. And he would point people to Jesus whose ministry was just about to begin. It was John who baptized Jesus. And in that moment, it launched Jesus into his earthly ministry. And some of the disciples, Andrew and John, were following John the Baptist. And Andrew's the one who goes to Peter and says, hey, you need to come and see Jesus. He's the Messiah. But there's Another disciple who was a partner to Andrew, Peter, and John. And his name is James. And I want to look at the character of James, this disciple. And I believe that his actions teach us something that will help us to keep on going even when we go through seasons of disappointment and discouragement. Turn them in your Bible to Luke chapter 5, and we're going to read from the start of that chapter. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. 
When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. Ever gone through a season in life where you just feel like you can't get a bite? Everything that you've tried and done before, you've done again and no result. All you seem to be catching is disappointment. What do you do in times like this? Where is James when everyone else is listening to John the Baptist preach? Where is James when he's baptizing Jesus? Well, James is back in Bethsaida with his father Zebedee. Zebedee had a fishing business. They had fishing boats and they were fishermen. And at this point, James is with his father looking after their boats, but also looking after their nets, so that when they were ready to go fishing, their nets were ready. I want to talk to you today about your nets. See, in the Bible, the nets are a picture of our lives. Last week, Pastor Neil brought an incredible message where he asked the question, can God use me? Can God use you? Well, I want to ask you today, are you ready for God to use you. I want to talk to you today about the condition of your nets. Any good skipper and crew will know that it's not just good enough to leave the harbor. You've got to have your nets with you ready to put into the water to catch your fish. And they would also know that the condition of your nets are really important too. If your nets are not in a good condition, if they're broken, if they're not in a good state of repair, they are not going to fish well. And in our text today, we read that the fishermen were washing their nets. Just as it's the skipper and the crew's responsibility to look after their nets, It's our responsibility to look after our own lives. It's our responsibility to ensure that we are growing and maturing in our followership, discipleship of Jesus. That we're growing in our understanding of who he is and how he wants us to live in this life. It's not always glamorous. It's not always on the tour with the big preacher. Often it's in the daily mundane points of life where we're faithful, where we're taking the moment to ask God to help us to grow and to mature. The journey of discipleship is a lot like mending and repairing nets. Taking the moment to look what's going on, what needs attention, asking for help, fixing and moving forward. See, during seasons of challenge and struggle, which I think if we're all being honest, we've all been through some of those recently, it's really important that we look after ourselves. It's really important that we look after our souls, our inner self. Keep your nets ready. Keep yourself ready so that when Jesus calls, you are ready to cast your net. How do we get ourselves ready? Well, first of all, our starting place is that we remember 
that even when we feel like our nets are empty, if you have Jesus, you're still full. Even though everything around you would seem to appear that everything is falling apart and everything is going wrong, if you know Jesus, your life is already full. That is the starting point. Most of my childhood, my mum and dad were net makers. And every day after school, I would head round to their net store. And I'd be waiting for my mum to finish. She was probably still finishing off a, a part of the net, a cord end, or a, she'd be cutting up bits for the net to be put together. And that was what she did. She was on the first floor. She put all that parts of the net together. And then eventually when that was finished, it would be passed down through a hatch in the floor. And then on the main floor, my dad with some other guys, they would put the rest of the net all together. They had a great long store so they could hang up the net and you could see all the different parts of the net being put together. And when it was completed, it would be ready to transport to the fishing boat and then to be fished. But there came a point when sometimes if the boat had been caught up in rough seas or maybe the net had been caught along the sea floor, that it would need to come back into the net store and be repaired. Now, this wasn't as fun of experience when you would come from school into the net store and there was a net that had been fished in the North Sea hanging up. In that net, it wasn't the pretty, beautiful netting that had left originally. It still had in it some of the ocean floor, the mud that it had trawled across. It even had some, some rotten fish in there. I can still remember the smell of those nets. It wasn't pleasant. If you're in Peterhead right now, I'm sure you can relate to that smell. What would happen is they would hang it up and they would do an examination. They would see the areas that needed to be repaired. They'd see the bits that needed to be cut out and a new panel would be put in. They'd see bits that needed to be tightened and they would do everything that could be done so that it was ready to go back out to fish again. I think that's a great picture of what our journey of discipleship looks like. There are moments when we need to be cleaned. There are moments when we need to be mended so that we can fish again. See, the Bible tells us here that the disciples, they were washing their nets. And when they were washing their nets, they were looking for you know, weeds or things that shouldn't be there. They were picking them out and they were making sure that there were any holes. They were mending those holes so that they could cast their net into the water again. And when they got some fish, they wouldn't escape. And just as the disciples were taking time to care for their nets, we've got to take time to care for our lives. Can I ask you today, are you ready for God to use you? Is your life clean? You see, they were cleaning their nets. And it's our responsibility that our lives are clean. Cleaning is our responsibility. I read this this week. My room, my mess, my business. The great philosopher Garfield, the cartoon character, said those words. And I think he's right. It's our responsibility that we make sure our lives are clean. You know, there is good news today. We can come to God and ask Him to clean our lives. This is what David says in Psalm 51. He says this, Purify me from my sins, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. The brother of Jesus, James, he says these words, Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your heart, you double-minded. Hey, there's good news today. You can come to God. You no longer need to feel condemned. You no, no longer need to feel unclean. You can come to God, and he promises to clean you. Here we're, we hear about our hands. This talks about our public life, our witness, our testimony. It's our responsibility that we make sure 
our public life is honoring to God and is sending out a good news message to the people we're doing life with. And that only flows from a healthy private life. It talks about the heart. When the psalmist says this in Psalm 24, Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in the holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart. To be ready for God to use you, you need to be clean and pure. You don't need to live condemned. You can receive the cleansing and the cleaning that God promises when you come to him and you ask him. You know, that's not glamorous. It's so important that if you want God to work through you and use you, that your life is clean, that your nets is ready. What's James doing? He's making sure the nets are ready. And of course, there's also mending. Just last week, uh, one of the young guys in our church, he's a fisherman, and I'd sent him a message to catch up with them. And I hadn't heard from him until later in the day when he said, oh, really sorry, uh, we were really busy at the boat. We had torn our net and we were repairing it. Through the storms of life, through the challenges that we face, we all at some point experience tears in our life. Now we've spoke about the responsibility we have to keep our lives clean, but the mending talks about things that happen to us. Life circumstances. Maybe in this past year there's something's happened that you never saw coming. Maybe a relationship hasn't worked out the way that you thought it would. Something failed that you thought was a sure winner. Maybe in this time there's been someone you've lost that you love so dearly. And in the midst of all this, there's been tears. There's these emotional wounds in your life. And, and any fisherman will tell you, if you've got holes in your net, tears in your net, you ain't going to catch anything. And it's important that we take time to mend our nets, to, to receive the healing and the wholeness that Jesus came to bring to us. You know, in the Bible, one of the names is Jehovah Shalom for God. It speaks of peace. It talks about the wholeness that he came to give to you. And if you've got tears in your life, then I want to encourage you today to take the time to mend those tears. Because if you want God to work through you, to use you, and to bring lasting glory to Him, it's important that our nets are clean and they're mended. Ready to fish well. Sometimes it can feel in life there's a big hole, something isn't right something is missing and it's important that we take time to mend those holes so our lives can be clean our lives are mended our lives are whole and it's at this point that James is taking the time to wash and mend the nets that when Jesus calls and Jesus says it's time to go and cast your net, even at a moment where it didn't make sense, during the day was not the time they went fishing. They'd been fishing all night and caught nothing, and Jesus was a carpenter. He wasn't a fisherman. These guys were. And Jesus gives them the command to go out into the deep water and to let their nets down. See, they were ready to fish when Jesus called them. And there's this moment when Jesus says, it's time to cast your net, it's time to shoot, it's time for me to use you. I'm calling you to this moment and to this purpose. You, we need to be ready. And, and in this season, it often is a time where it doesn't make sense. It's going to take a lot of faith, but it's also going to take a lot of obedience. See, Peter might not have agreed that this was a good time to go fishing, but he still obeyed. And he says these mature words for a pretty new follower. He says this, because you say so, I will. Because you say so, I will. Can I ask you today, what has God said to you through his word 
He's already said to you, and He's waiting for you to respond with our I will. Sometimes, when we read things in God's Word, it doesn't always make sense. It doesn't always suit our preferences. It doesn't always fit in with culture and society today. But because you say so, I will. When you obey God and His Word, you can always expect a result. See, this story tells us that when they were obedient to what Jesus' instruction was, they caught so much fish, their boats began to sink. And I believe today, as you're watching me, God is speaking to you. And He is maybe asking you to do things that are uncomfortable, maybe don't make sense. But if you'll obey Him, if you will take Him at His word, if you will just have the same attitude as Peter, even if you don't understand, even if it doesn't make sense, because you say so, I will, then God can use you. Are you ready for God to use you, if you can respond when Jesus is calling, even when it doesn't make sense, and just say, I will, then you're ready. You see, these disciples were so astonished at what happened, the Bible tells us that they were confronted with their sinful selves. Uh, Peter is begging for mercy, and they realize how great Jesus is, so great that they leave everything. They leave their boats, they leave their nets, and they follow after Jesus. What was it about Jesus that was so attractive, that was so wonderful, that everything else they'd already known was worth leaving behind to spend every moment of their lives with Jesus? What was it about this man? Jesus said these words, he said, for whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will save it. James and the other disciples, they lay down everything that they'd known up to this point. They lay down their nets, they lay down their lives, they lay it down, and they pick up the life that Jesus had for them. See, maybe you're watching me today and your life actually feels like a broken net. There's a huge hole in your life. And, and, and Jesus is calling you today to lay down your broken nets and to pick up the life that He has for you. That's why He came. He came to make you whole. He came so that you no longer needed to feel unclean and you didn't need to feel so burdened and condemned. He came to give you life and freedom and He came to give you a life to the full. And I wonder today, will you obey the word of Jesus? Lay down your life and pick up the life that He came to bring to you. And I, how, how do I do that? Well, it's, it starts with a, a commitment to Him. And I want to give you that opportunity right now. And, and I want to help you to say, Jesus, I want the life that you have for me. I recognize the life that I'm living right now. There is more. You have more for me. And if you feel today condemned and you're feeling in this moment that you are unclean. Jesus came to cleanse you and forgive you of all that stuff, all that rubbish, all that regret. The Bible calls it sin. He came to set you free from that, to give you a new life here on earth, but also the promise that you'll spend eternity with Him forevermore. If, if that's you today and say, Daniel, I want to experience that, well, can, can you just pray this prayer that I'm going to lead you in sincerely from your heart? Just say these words. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you that you came into this world, that you went to the cross, you died in my place, you took my sin. I realize I'm a sinner. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. 
Make me into a new person by the power of your Spirit. I confess you are my Lord. Help me to follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that today for the first time, then I, we want to help you. We want to connect with you. So please, can you let us know in the message or chat or however you can contact us today, let us know. We want to celebrate with you. And to everyone else who's watching me today, you love Jesus. You, you know him as your Savior. But is he your Lord? See, this sort of call the disciples answer to was not just a belief that Jesus is Savior. They were declaring that He is Lord. And they were going to live their lives clean and mended so that He could work through them. I want to ask you today, are you living a manner of life that you are clean and mended and that you're ready for God to use you? If you want to be a legend of the faith, then keep yourself clean. Keep yourself mended and whole so that God can work through you. Father, I pray in Jesus' name for those who are watching me right now. They're your children. They know you. I pray if anyone's feeling condemnation in their heart, I pray that they would realize the conviction of the Holy Spirit that is drawing them near to you. That they would take this moment to make a fresh commitment. That they would take this moment to to come to you once again, to be clean and to be mended so that they can be used by you to bring lasting glory to your name. So Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you would meet with those who are watching me right now. Do a work in their heart that they'll be ready to serve you and to bring you glory. In Jesus' name, amen.
Are you washing your nets? Are you mending your nets? Are you getting yourself ready for what God is about to do in this new season? You know, James and those other disciples, they did not have a clue how different their day was going to be. It started off, I guess, I guess weary, tired, disappointed, disappointed. But God turned everything around when they were obedient to his word. I believe that God is speaking to someone right now. You're dealing with disappointment. You're dealing with challenge. You're, you're actually saying, why should I even bother with these nets anymore? And of course, nets signified things that are happening in your world. Take encouragement as Pastor Dan has inspired us. Prepare yourself. Prepare your life. Get yourself ready. Listen, position yourself for the blessing of God to flow in and through you. Your breakthrough is closer than you realize. These guys, these fishermen, I guess they, they literally become legends within the fishing community because of the catch that they received on that occasion because of Jesus. But they wash their nets in their tired season, in their weary season. They mended their nets when they probably didn't even feel like it. In other words, they were ready when their master called on them. I really trust that you have taken inspiration from God's word and you are getting your nets ready. Yes, you may be toiled all night. Yes, you may be faced disappointed. Yes, it maybe feels dark. Yes, maybe you're exhausted. But I want to encourage you, go one more time. Come on, don't give up. You are maybe on the brink of a miracle. You never know how close you are to the incredible breakthrough that God has ordained for you. Well, I'm not the preacher. I think Pastor Dan has covered that more than well. And why don't we say amen and thank you to Dan for sharing the word of the Lord. Well, can I encourage you? We would love to see you in person. After this service at 2 o'clock, uh, after the service online, registration opens. And we would love to see you here in person. 9.30, 11.30, we have two services. We are doing everything to keep people safe. I can testify that we are having a great time together, beginning to feel more like normal. Uh, we're beginning to get there and a sense of this is, this is what it was always meant to be. But I want to encourage you, maybe you've got weary and you're tired and you've just got so familiar to watching from home. It's maybe easier to watch from home. It's always going to be easier to watch from home, but there is something incredible about community and I can't encourage you enough. If you can, try to get in person in the house. Registration at 2 o'clock. We still need you to register just so we have an idea for the numbers and the capacity of the building. Can I ask you to be, please be, continue to be in prayer for our Apex Community Cafe. It is an incredible work that God is helping us to do right here in our local community. There is an incredible blessing when you see beyond yourself and you reach out to help others. And the team are doing an incredible work. The food that they're providing is so tasty, and I can testify to that. But can I ask you to pray that some of the incredible folks that are coming along to use that service, I tell you, they need God to work on their life. So let's believe that something is going to happen. But perhaps you're in a situation that is just financially, you're facing challenge right now, or, or there are things that are happening, and, and you would benefit just from a great nutritious meal, then please come along. There's no embarrassment in that. I tell you, you will receive a great warm welcome, not only a lovely warm soup, but you will receive a warm welcome. But let's be in prayer that God is going to do something significant through this ministry. And that's why I get to say thank you for your giving, your continuous giving through tithes and offerings and your generosity. It allows us to move forward in everything that God has ordained, not only locally, 
but globally we are able to help missionaries that are facing difficult, challenging situations, evangelists that haven't been able to travel at this time. And, and because you have been prepared to be obedient to the Word of God in your giving, we have been able to help so many people along this journey, and we continue to do so. And perhaps you're facing a situation right now where you really need some financial help. Then please let us know. Uh, please contact us at the Apex Center on the email that's coming up on the screen, and we'll get in touch with you. Well, there are various ways to give. There are those who are using the QR code, and they give through that. Thank you for using that method. Those who are giving online or those who continue to give uh, through an through, uh, envelope, a check through the Apex Center. We really appreciate that. We never take generosity for granted and we'll always say thank you. And we really want to lead by example. As God is blessing us as a local church, we want to be able to reach out further. And there is so much more that I really believe that God has put in our heart in this season. As, and as we press into this next thing that God has for us, we want to be prepared and we want to be ready. So thank you so much for doing that. Well, I trust you've enjoyed our service today. If you have, why don't you tell someone about it? Perhaps there's someone, a friend that watches online. Well, why don't you share uh, the link and let them know that good things are happening? You've been inspired by this word from Pastor Dan today. Why don't you tell a friend about it? Get them to tune in, link in. This is an incredible way to share the gospel. Maybe it's a challenge to invite someone along to church, uh, literally church building for the first time. But I tell you, it's easy to say, hey, why don't you check this out? You'll really enjoy watching this. You never know that that could be a seasonal, timely message for a friend or loved one who needs to connect with God and connect with purpose. Well, here's Neil Cameron signing off. So good to be with you this morning, still believing that the best is yet to be. May you be blessed by God's purposes. Trust you, God, and I will trust you. I will trust you. I will trust you, God. Oh, even when it's hard.